In this demonstration, we're going to configure firewall rules on a PFSense security appliance. First, we're going to configure a firewall rule to allow both HTTP and HTTPS traffic from Internet, or WAN, through the firewall into our web server on our DMZ. The second thing we're going to do is configure a rule to allow all traffic coming from our LAN to get to our DMZ through the firewall. I want to verify that I have my DMZ ready to go. So I'll scroll down, and you can see I have my three interfaces here, and they have assigned IPs. Let's create our rules. I'll go to Firewall, Rules, and the first rules I'll configure are the ones from our WAN to our DMZ to allow HTTP and HTTPS to our web server. I want to go to our DMZ tab here, and down here I have a few buttons. You'll notice there are two buttons that say Add. This one has the arrow pointing up, and if I pick that one, it'll add the rule to the top of my list. If I click on the one with the arrow pointing down, it'll add the rule to the bottom, so I'll click on that one. For our rule, we want to choose to pass the traffic through the firewall. My other choices are to block it or reject it. If we choose reject, the packets are returned to the sender, and the sender can see that they were blocked. Block will just drop the packets as if they never arrived. For security reasons, sometimes you don't want senders to know that your device is even there, and it's better to just reject the packets. But if you're troubleshooting issues, blocking can be more helpful. Either way, with block or reject, the packets won't reach the destination. The interface that I want to configure is the DMZ. You can see that I have my LAN and WAN here as well. For address family, I'll leave it as IPv4. The other choices are IPv6 or both. For protocol, we're allowing HTTP, which runs on TCP. If I click the drop-down list, you can see all the other protocols that we could choose if we were going to allow some other type of traffic. Our source is going to be from our WAN network, and I need to see more options, so I'll click on the Display Advanced button. The source port range is going to be HTTP. I could put in a single port or a range, but we just want HTTP port 80. Since this is going to be my web server, I need to put in the IP address here. First, I'll pick single host or alias, and now let's pop our diagram back up. Our web server's IP is right here, so let's go back and enter that in. Destination address will be 172.16.1.5. We're using HTTP, and the rest of this looks good. Down here, we could log packets handled by this rule. Since this is a web server, we probably don't want to do that since our log would be overwhelmed. If it was FTP, SSH, or other traffic like that, we probably would want to log traffic, but not for normal web requests. We do want to put a description in here because as you create more and more rules, you'll forget what they all do. For this, I'll type in HTTP to DMZ from WAN and click Save. On our next page here, we have to click on Apply Changes for the changes to my firewall to take effect. So, here are my rules so far. I have one that allows my DMZ out, and the second one is our HTTP rule from the WAN on port 80, the web server on our DMZ. Now, you might be saying to yourself, doesn't most web traffic use HTTPS these days? Well, that answer is certainly yes, so now we need an HTTPS rule. Here's some good news. To save a bit of time and keep from making any errors, we can just copy this rule and change the HTTP port 80 to HTTPS port 443. I'll click here, which is the copy icon. What this does is create a new rule with the exact same settings. I'll scroll down and change my source from HTTP port 80 to HTTPS port 443. For the destination, I'll do the same. Scroll down, change the description by just adding the letter S, and click Save. On this page, click Apply Changes. Down here, you now see our rules for both HTTP and HTTPS. Now, let's look at our diagram again. This time, I want to create a rule that allows any traffic from my LAN to get to the DMZ. Let's go back to our firewall and configure that now. These rules are read from the top down, so for example, if the first rule says block everything, none of the other rules would ever be seen because that's the very first rule. 
However, if we made a rule right now that said to block everything and put it at the bottom, our first three rules would still be fine, but everything else would be blocked. By default, everything is blocked with pfSense anyway, unless you open it, so we wouldn't really need that sort of rule, but it doesn't hurt anything. So far, our rules don't affect one another, so it really doesn't matter where we put them, but keep all of this in mind when creating rules. We'll just click on Add and use the one that puts it at the bottom of the list. Our action will be to pass traffic. We'll leave the interface and address family alone, but for protocol, we're going to change this from TCP to any. This might not be the best practice, but we're allowing any and all traffic from our LAN to reach our DMZ. Under source, we'll choose our LAN network from the list. Our destination will be the DMZ from this list. We don't want to forget a description for this rule. I'll type LAN to DMZ any. Click save and as always, apply changes. Here's my latest rule. My source is from the LAN on any port to my DMZ on any port. By the way, the asterisk is wildcard, which means any. Over here, the green check mark means it's enabled. That's it for this demo. In this demo, we created firewall rules on our firewall. First, we configured HTTP and HTTPS traffic from the WAN to a web server on our DMZ. And then we created a rule to allow any traffic from our LAN to get to our DMZ.